times our z is 25 square root of 25 all over y which is 65 which is equal to 300 square root of 25 is 5 5 all over 65 65 divided by 5 is 13 so our k our k is equal to 300 over 13 we can now put that back into this equation and express it in terms of x, y, and root and z is equal to 300 y all over 13 root z. Now, the question that went further and then said that we should find the value of x, find the value of x when y is equal to 4, 6, 8. Y is equal to 4, 6, 8. And the z is equal to 144. Z is equal to 144. Let's find the value of x. So we'll now put the value of y and z into this equation. So now that will now be x is equal to what? 300. Mind you, our k is 300 over 13. Uh, that's 300 times y times 4, 6, 8, all over 13 times, mind you, this root, square root of z, that will be square root of 144, which is equal to 300 times 4, 6, 8, all over 13, square root of 144 is 12. Times 12. Now, 416 divided by 13 will give us 36. 36 divided by 12 will give us 3. And therefore, we can now foresee that x is equal to 300 times 3. Therefore, we can conveniently say that x is equal to 900. The last type of variation we'll be dealing with in our course of study is partial variation. Partial variation deals with the quantity or variable that depends on another independent variable. Where one of the independent variables remain the same always, and the others other changes according to the quantity of the independent variable used. Solving problem on partial variation require forming and finding the solution of two constants in a pair of simultaneous equations. That is, we are going to be making use of the knowledge of simultaneous equation here. And I'll take an example. He said the quantity of y is partly constant and partly varies inversely as a square of x. That is, the quantity y is partly constant which means A, and partly varies inversely, you add, and B is another constant, inversely as a square of X. So, the first, the first question is, write down the relationship between X and Y. This is the relationship between X and Y. Now the B parts, he said when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 11. And when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 5. Then the final question is to find y when x is equal to 2. But that one, okay, find y when x is equal to 4. From these two values, we have three sets of values, but here there is an unknown. But here we are being given x and y. From these two expressions, we are going to have two sets of equations. We are going to plug in our values into this, into our first ex expression. That will be y using these values 
Our y is what? Our y is 11 here. 11 is equal to a plus b all over 1 squared. 1 squared is still 1. So we can conveniently say that 11 is equal to a plus b, which is our equation 1. Now, we now consider this set of values. Is that y is equal to 5 uh, when s is equal to 2? That's a plus b all over 2 squared. From here, we can have, we are going to have something like this 5 is equal to what? a plus b all over 4. Now, for us to solve, we have to eliminate this denominator. And how do we do that? We are going to multiply each term by 4. So we'll be having 4 times 5 is equal to 4 times a plus b all over 4 times 4. What are we doing here? Multiply. Each term by four. So this will now give us twenty is equal to four a plus b equation two. Now bring the two equations together. Where's our equation one? This is our equation one. Now I have eleven is equal to a plus b. We now do equation, we now subtract, subtract equation 1, subtract equation 1, 1 from equation 2. Okay, so we now be if we have to subtract equation one from two, twenty minus eleven is nine. We have been nine. This equals to four a minus a. That's three a. B minus b is zero. So from here we can now get the value of a. Our a will be equals to. If we should divide both sides by three, we'll be having nine all over three. This equals to three a all over. 3. This 3 will cancel this, and then this one will give us 9 divided by 3 will give us 3. So we can conveniently say that our a is equal to 3. Now we need to get our b. Our b, slotting our a into this our equation 1, we can conveniently say that 11 is equal to substitute. Substitute a equals to three in equation one. So that will be uh, eleven is equal to three plus b. B is equal to eleven minus three, which is equal to what? Eight. Now we've been able to get the value of a and we'll be able to get the value of b to be 8. a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 8. Now the next step we should find y when x is equal to 4. So what are we going to do? We're going to plug in our values back into our relationship. That is the expression, the relationship of x and y. So we now say that our y, which is what well, we don't know is equal to a. What's our a? That's 3. Mm -hmm. Plus our b is 8. And our x is 4. 4 squared. Which is equal to 3 plus 8 all over 16. Which is equal to 3 plus half. Which is the same thing as. Uh, our SM is 2, 
that will be 2 times 3, that's a 6 plus 1, which is equal to 7, 7 over 2, which is 7 over 2. So our y is 7 over 2, or 3 and a half. Under algebraic process, we'll be now going to factorization as we are having here. While solving mathematical expression that involves factorization, we have to identify the highest common factor, take it out, that is, we'll bring it out, and then leave the remaining expression in a bracket. We'll take an example. Our first example is a, that is, example of factorization is one, which